Hey guys, hello everyone. Can you all hear me? Am I audible? Yes. Thank you. So, welcome all of you for the day two of the CCNP security demo. So, in the yesterday session, we had understood like how do we we were talking about the IPsec site to site concept like uh, how is it different uh, how do we what do we know about VPN what is IPsec and uh, the types of VPN site to site and remote to site and uh, we discussed the overview of the in a broader sense that when we talk about IPsec uh, what all things are involved which all suite of protocols are involved in it like, like version one version two and the data encapsulation etc so today we will be continuing on the lab side because yesterday we could not finish the practical point of view the demonstration so let's have a look into the lab where let me share my screen uh, in terms of the lab is my screen visible Yes. Great. So this is a site-to-site -site VPN topology, which is there in front of you, where you have an engineering department and a sales department. And consider there is one more department here. Uh, this is my inside network, 190 to 168.20. On one site A, you can consider the FTD over here is having a management IP of 91.1.1.59. And over there, on the other side, the FTD has a management IP of 91.1.1.60. And there is another FTD on the third side, which is having an IP of 91.1.1.61. So these FTDs or these sites are connected one hop away. You can have multiple hops. We can connect the internet over there so that we can enable routing and understand uh, with how the tunneling is being created between the two sites. So the primary goal is the internal networks on different sites, they should be able to communicate with each other over the internet. Now, cur currently we are considering that this particular router, which is in between, it's uh, acting like our internet router. So this router will not be given or it won't know the inside network IPs. Okay, for this router, only the directly connected routing, uh, the ne directly connected networks are understood or aware, the router is aware only about the directly connected networks. It has no clue about the inside network 192.168.20 or 192.168.40 or over this side. Just give me one minute. All right, so the router won't be knowing anything about the internal networks, just like our internet routers would not know about your inside side network. So we are going to first register these sensors or these FTDs because these are our next generation firewalls. So that will get registered on our FMC. On Cisco or even on any other uh, next generation firewall, there is always one manager which gives uh, where we are going to register all the devices which are on different branch. Okay. So it could be, it is the best way to manage in a centralized manner where all of your sensors uh, enterprise can have are registered with one or two FMCs. Okay. And you as an administrator or a network engineer or the profile can just get an access to the base on the basis of the visibility or the permission access given by the administrator that okay so and so person can only access so and so page or a policy or a so anything to configure and his job is done so fmc is the one which is going to manage all our sensors so the primary thing is that you configure the management ip all of these are in the one management subnet which is 91.1.0 Subnet. So I hope the picture or the topology is very clear. It's pretty simple, like any site-to-site -site VPN. 
in place of 50ds you may have in np ccnp security we would be learning where we will see if there are routers how they how do we create the side to side vpn with different uh, mechanisms then you can have a one side you can have an asc on the other side you may have another devices like router or an ftd or both the sides you can have ftd so these are known as the vpn gateways in some terminologies people use this as vpn gateways because here is where we are configuring the tunnel will be created between the entities that are facing towards the internet so our job is to create a tunnel over this side okay so these devices which are being managed by the company it could be any device it could be an asa it could be a router it could be your next generation firewall it could be simply uh, you know the devices where we can have now generally these are the only devices asa ftd uh, routers csr routers or your ios routers those kind of routers where you can go and configure the vpn side to side vpn and you can choose which mechanism you want to go with side to side broadly we know that there are two things to be chosen one is either you want to go with policy based and whether you want to go with route based so today we'd be looking in towards the policy based where we're just going to provide information that which because your internal network may have different subnets this is where engineering department is sitting you may have sales hr it different departments so you can define which in the policy that which remote networks in on either of the side you are allowing to go via the vpn tunnel okay so all these things are in the terms of policy based in the route based there is a different concept where we create a different tunnel interface and we direct that the traffic when which will hit that interface only those traffic will be carried inside that tunnel so you are creating a virtual tunnel interface here there is no interface creation in this side here we can create a virtual tunnel which we normally have a concept of vti where you have static vti you can also have dynamic vti okay so dynamic vti is the one which is majorly used in a hub and spoke top topology so when we say about vpn okay side to side vpn we have three major topologies in picture now currently the topology which you people are referring here is considered to be as a point to point because here we consider this as a point to point topology there is a direct point connection which we have the other one we have which is the other famous one which is the hub and spoke because generally you may find your company will have one headquarter office and from the headquarter you will try to manage different branch offices so this is branch a branch b branch c likewise so these are nothing but your ftds we are try trying to say so you want to create a tunnel between the hub and you want this to be dynamically because in case you are going to expand further then you should not have much of a configuration on the hub side you should have minimal configuration on the hub side and dynamically it will take care of the branches which you will go on expanding so if you add another branch here there should not be any changes which you would have to do on the headquarter side so when you will choose dynamic vti especially for hub and spoke this is a popular method so depending on the scenario the customers are trying to deploy whether it is a data center scenario or an enterprise scenario or an isp scenario on those scenario level we can adopt the topologies okay so hub and spoke point to point is quite popular and then you also have a full mesh topology where each of these branches will be connected via each other with the help of a vpn so all the branches a let's say a will be connected to b c d e again b will be connected to a c d e so in a kind of a full mesh each of these branches will have their connectivity with the help of a vpn so these are the three branches uh, the three three topologies that are being used when you will be deploying a vpn it will ask you to choose an option the first option is whether you want to go with policy or route the second option is whether you want to have a point to point topology or a hub and spoke topology or a mesh topology so these are some primary choose options which you will get when you will start the configuration so when i will show you that you may get some idea that 
how this is basically going to do so at present let me just show you the fmc part where we have registered the sensors over the fmc so if i show you that so here you can see this is my fmc ip 91.1.1.100 and these are the three site site a with ip 91.1.59 site b with 91.1.60 and site C with 91.1.61. So I've registered all these three FTDs over the FMC. The process is very simple. You'll go, you will put the add device. And once you go there, you will just put the name of the, the host IP. Then you will give a name. You'll put a key. And then you will simply say you want to uh, assign this policy and the license. And then you will say register. So at the back end, it will form a specific uh, tunnel, SF tunnel. It is a different tunnel, not a VPN tunnel. It's an SF tunnel. It will try to create and it will try to register these devices over this controller. Okay. So now once you register the devices, what is the process of creating the site to site VPN? What all things we need it here? So your topology understanding should be pretty clear here. Then what is your inside facing interface and outside interface? So currently in all of these devices, you will find that your 0, 01 is outside, your 0, 01 is outside. Only in this scenario, the interface which we have created with 00, 0 as outside. So outside IPs, we are creating in the range or subnet here, consider it is 181. In this side, it is 182. And on this side, we will consider it as 183. So the outside subnet is 181.1.1.0 slash 24 on this side, 182.1.1.0. 0 slash 24 and over here it is 183.1.1.0 slash 24. So this is our outside IP. The inside is already here it is 20.1, here it is 40.1, here let us consider it is 192, 168, 60.1. Okay, so that we remember this 20, 40, and 60. And uh, definitely you can choose the dot two over here as dot one is already been taken up you can choose dot two on the other side so define the interfaces first with the ips and these devices which are there on the different sites you will like to get these devices with the dynamic ips so you definitely configure one dhcp configuration over this side that this inside interface is going to act like a dhcp server so on all the sides, so this is very, very basic configuration, guys. Not very uh, hard, uh, very complex, normal enterprise environment. This is very common. So this is going to be your DHCP server so that all my DHCP clients are going to be get, uh, getting assigned the IP dynamically. So let's configure the IPs. In some of the FTDs, you may find the IPs already configured. In few, I've just left so that I can show you once. And these PCs, we don't have to configure anything else. Router, nothing else. We just need to make sure that the IPs dot two dot two in this subnet is being configured. We are not even using currently any routing here. Static routing we will be enabling on the server side. That means on the FTD side, not the server. On the FTD side, we will use static routing. Since whatever network traffic will come, this firewall should know where to point out. So the pointing out will be towards the next hop only. So for all of them, the next hop is this router's IP. So check one, interface config. Check two is your DHCP config. Check three is your routing. That any default network which will come on the firewall, you're going to direct it towards the next hop. Because whenever we're forming any VPN tunnel, guys, the very basic minimal thing when we start checking, when the tunnel doesn't come up, many people come up with the issues I don't see, I've configured everything, my configuration is done, everything is perfect on both the side, the configuration part, but I don't see my tunnel is coming up. So you need to go to the grassroots and try to troubleshoot whether your first ta task is whether there is a reachability from your endpoint to endpoint whether this peer IP is reachable to here because basic connectivity is something which is 
very much clear you don't need a vpn concept there so your sites each of these sites they should be reachable how do we check that using a ping command so you will simply try to check whether from this ftd whether you're able to connect here whether you're able to connect to these outer interface ip 182.1.1.0 uh, one so if you're able to connect to your outside interface the connectivity issue is being resolved means you are basic uh, troubleshooting you have started the connectivity there is no problem then you can figure out where the particular problem is stuck in the tunnel which phase is being stuck phase one is stuck in those main mode messages or whether phase two is stuck in the uh, quick mode messages in case you're using ic version one so there again you need to check whether the client is using version one or version two and accordingly try to start the packet capture and see where these messages are getting stuck where there is a problem but the basic thing you need to eliminate is that there is no connectivity issue so that's the reason we are ensuring that the routing is being configured perfectly you can use static dynamic any type of routing so that this is your basic configuration and once you're done with this then we will jump to the side to side configuration and we will see that how we are going to do it so Let's begin with this, guys. I'll just clear my drawing and we will just jump and see what all configurations we have. It So interface, DHCP and routing. So I'll get into the device one first. That is dot 59 site A. Uh, you may find that this tunnel interface, you ignore this. I just want to delete this. Okay, and save it. Okay. Okay, there is some error. No worries. So just forget that tunnel interface for now. So just check out the outside interface and the inside interface configuration. So your inside is 20.1 and your outside is 181.1.1. So your interface IP has been configured and it has been enabled. You can see the green LEDs here. It has been enabled. So in the same page, so hello. Yep. Yeah, start to interrupt you. I just joined. May you know this class for ACA or SD web? Uh, this is an FTD side to side VPN. Okay, okay, you go ahead. Yeah, thank you. All right. So, once you have configured the basic IP on the interfaces, the next thing is to go and check out for the DHCP. So in the DHCP, you have an option to choose DHCP server. You can give the domain name, the DNS server. All these are basic information which you can configure. And apart from this, we know we configured the pool. So if you see here, I have created one pool, 192, 168, 20.10 to 20.20. So 10 IPs are there here. And DHCP server is created on my inside interface. All right. So, and you have enabled the DHCP server. You can see this is being green. So this inside interface DHCP configuration has been done. So your interface configuration is done. Your DHCP configuration is done. Now finally coming to your routing. So when you will come to your routing configuration, we will get into the static route here. Okay. We will edit this, that, or we will delete this first. So you're going to say add root and here you're going to point out that any network, any default network will go from the outside interface, any IP. If it is coming, we will put up a default setting that it will go via gateway. So the gateway is 182, 181.1.2, that is gateway one. So you'll click on this and you'll simply say, okay. So here you have created a static routing that default route, any IP go via the next hop. Okay. And then, so these three things are done interfaces, DHCP and routing. So you're just going to simply say, save this configuration. Now the same thing you're repeating on the other three side. Okay. So once you're done with this, again, get into the devices page tab get into the device management and then you will click on the site 
B. Okay. So again, here you can see the inside IP is 40.1. The outside is 182.1.1. Uh, if you want, you can, I was just trying to create a route-based VPN. So that's why you can see one tunnel interface is being there. We can ignore that. Then a DHCP server configuration. Okay, same way, like 40.10 to 40.20, one pool is created and you have enabled that on the inside interface. And then you will jump into the routing where you will again configure one static route. And let me delete this. And let's create a new one. So again, your every network uh, which will go, it will go via the grace interface that is outside interface, any IP. And then we can select the gateway as the next hop, which is gateway FTD2. Okay, and simply say, okay. And you will simply save it. So we are done with site A, interface, DHCP and routing configuration. And then finally, we will get into the next site, which is site C. So we will click on this. So here I haven't created anything just because I wanted one of them to be shown to you as from the scratch. So my 0, 0 interface, so look into the diagram here inside this 0, 0 is outside and 0, 1 is inside in this case. So be very careful while you're assigning the interface, what is outside and what is inside. So your, your 0, 0 is outside, give a logical name. So this is giving a name to the interface because in Cisco devices, the name of interface is configuration. It sets the security level. Then you can select the zone. So here you have created few zones. So this is an outside zone. You will assign this interface on the outside zone. And then we can configure the IP since this is an outside one. So we will have 183.1.1.1. So 183.1.1.1 slash 24. And you can configure IPv6 also. Advanced configurations you can have for active this and all. So currently, just basic 183.1.1, this is my outside interface. And then go and configure the zero slash one, which was your inside interface. So give a name to this, enable it. You can give any name, security zone, you'll assign it inside zone. Give an IP. So now here it is in the subnet of 192.168.60.1 slash 24. So 60.1. Remaining things we are keeping it default. So once you're done with this, go to your DHCP server configuration. Again, you will create one pool over here. And that will be gone inside the. So this page will come up only once you save the configuration and deploy it, the inside and outside configuration. So let's save it first. And then you're going to deploy this. Deployment is like saving your configuration. So when you will get into the deployment, so whatever configuration you have done on FTD1, FTD2, FTD3, Okay, all your three sites, you can deploy it all together or you can just see also what all things we have configured or we have changed. We have changed access control policy, routing policy, etc. Mm -hmm. So those things, it will try to give you a preview. So you can simply select all together, all one. You can get an estimated time also, how long it will take this to deploy, roughly two minutes. And you can simply hit this deploy. If there is any warning, any error, it will try to validate and give it to you. Okay, so we have not done any S2S uh, configuration yet. A very basic configuration on interface routing. This is the one which we have just done. So while this is happening,
Okay, so once your 100% stage completion is happened, then that means your configurations are being applied. So meanwhile, this is happening. I can go and try to check out on the site C, the DHCP configuration I have not done because the interfaces were not saved. So I can, once the interfaces get saved, you will see that interfaces option inside the DHCP. So here, when we were doing that, inside the interface, you will only get to see all the interfaces once you have created that interface and you have saved it once. So here again, my inside is going to be the server and the pool is going to be 192.168.60.10 to 192.168.60.10. So 10 to 20, 10 IPs and we will enable this as a server. Once you are done with this, click OK. Get into the, okay, we have to save it. Once we Let's do the routing also. So again, we will get into the static route and we'll add the route here. So here again, all the things will go out of your outside ingress, uh, your egress interface is outside. So you'll select that, any IP network, and then you will simply go with the gateway, which is which we'll create here. Since there is no gateway FTD3, we will add one. So there is a plus option you can see, you can just go and create one. So gateway FTD three. And then you can simply give a host that is 183.1.1.2. Once you're done with this, you can simply save this. So one object you have created, and then you can choose that as your the next hop. And once you're done with this, your routing is basic routing has been done. You can simply say, okay. And once you're done with this, you can simply deploy it. So now only third FTD site C only will be seen because the rest two deployment we have finished. Select it, deploy it. Okay, so let this happen in progress. So we are done with our basic. Now let me check whether our basic routing uh, connectivity is being achieved or not. So from each of these FTDs, so we will go and check out whether the basic connectivity is there or not. Okay, let me open the other FTD also, 59. So here we can go and check, we'll try to ping the other side. So the other side was 182.1.1. So we can see that on this side, we are able to reach. So on the router side, let me show you, we have not done much. We have just show IP route. So currently only two networks would be there, 181 and 182, because I haven't configured the third interface. So let's go and configure the third interface gigabit zero slash two. And here we are going to assign IP address 183.1.1.2 slash 24. And here we are Nothing else, we can simply see. So currently we have three networks so that we can verify from the third site whether we are able to 
reach so show networks pick to just show you that the management ip is dot 61 only yes so we are on the 61 ftd now let's ping the other side 181 dot 1 dot any side we can ping now so basic connectivity we are trying to rule out so 182 dot 1 dot 1 dot 1 so that means from each of the sites your connectivity is being established so from 1.181.1.1 you're able to connect to 181.1.2 you're also able to connect to 181.1.3 so all of these sites are reachable so that means our basic thing is established the basic connectivity has been established so that once you are done you can now go and try to start your site to site configuration so let's get into there so for going for site to site configuration, you will get into the device tab and here you will see the option of site to site VPN. So we'll simply click on it. So here you will need to create the topology. You need to choose, you need to choose an options. So you will check, click on fire threat De defense, FTD, or you can simply click on add VPN there. So I'll select this. So here I was talking about the options at the very start. So as I said, you will get two options, policy-based, route-based, okay? So policy-based is simply where we say in Cisco's terms, crypto map. We are going to create crypto map. Whenever we create crypto map, it is only for the policy-based VPN. And when you're creating route-based, it's a crypto profile. So when you see the profile kind of a commands, these are basically for route-based VPN. So here you can give a name to the topology. You have an option to choose. You have an option to even choose the topology that for which topology are you trying to build? Okay. Point to point, hub and spoke or a mesh. And then you also have an option to choose whether you want to go with version one or version two. By default, nowadays we all go with version two because of its, it consumes less bandwidth. It gives us a lot of support in terms of asymmetric, uh, uh, what do you say, authentication. Okay, because even in authentication, you will we will be choosing whether we will go with pre-shared key mechanism or whether we want to go with digital certificates. So with pre-shared key mechanism, we have an understanding that version one allows a symmetric key. That means whatever is configured on site A, the key, that same key has to be there on the site B. That is considered to be symmetric key. Whereas in Ike version two, there is no such need that you should have a same key uh, written on both the sides so three options you get when you are so here you're creating one topology all right and then on based on that you're going to specify the endpoints you're going to select the crypto parameters and uh, some advanced options are also there where you can select some algorithms if you don't choose anything it will go with the default one so let's start the configuration here one by one so there are three endpoints for us if you remember we have node a we have node b okay so between node A and node B, we will form then between node B and node C means depending on uh, whether how you want to create the tunnel. In my case, I'm going to form a tunnel between this site A and site B and site A and site C. That will be again a point to point topology. Okay. So site A to B and site A to C. That is what we will try to configure. So firstly, let's give a name here. Site to site VPN between A to B. So we will give a name, logical name, so that we understand. We'll choose policy-based VPN for now. We'll choose point-to-point -to -point topology. We'll go with Ike version 2. And now we will try to add our endpoints. So you'll click on add option. So as soon as you click on this, so first we'll select the device. So the device is site A, 91.1.59. The interface where the tunnel will be created will be your outside interface. So you'll select outside. The IP will be automatically taken up. So the outside interface IP of site is 181.1.1. You will be taking this, this connection as bidirectional that anybody can originate the traffic. You have the option here, whether it only originator or answer only types VPN. We want it bidirectional currently that both the site can originate the traffic. Currently, we are not going again with writing any certificate here we are not using that 
and protected network. Since it is a policy based VPN, you are going to specify which subnet you are trying to allow for the traffic to be passed. So here you will click on this plus sign. You can add the network by using this plus again. Since here I've already created one site A network, I can show you that. So there is one site A inside network. So I've created one object with name site A inside network and the network subnet I have given that is 192.168.20.1. You can see this when I'm hovering it, you can see the network which is being allowed. So I'm allowing this inside network. So you'll select this as my protected network. Okay, so let's go and simply add it. Okay, and then you will simply say, okay. So this is your protected network that you are trying to only allow this subnet for the VPN. Okay, and you will simply say, okay. So your node A is being created. Same way, you will go and add for node B. So again, you will select site B here. Then you will have interface configuration that you are creating this tunnel on the outside interface. The IP will be taken up automatically, 182.1.1.1. The direction connection type is bi-direction. And here on site B, the protected network will be 192.168.40.0. So for that, I have again created one object for this. So let me just go here. So you have this site B, you'll simply say add and you'll simply say OK. And once that is done, you are going to say OK. So basically now your topology is ready with the endpoints. Now we have other tabs to be explored here because phase one, phase two is completely negotiation of Hagel parameters, Diffie-Hellman group selection and etc. So when you will select the IQ, OK. Currently, since we have done IIC version 2, we will get the option for the IIC version 2 settings. That what kind of algorithms we are trying to choose here. For encryption, here it is choosing DES. For hashing and authentication, it is choosing SHA. You can just drop down here and try to see which all options you have. You can also go with the AES uh, GCM, which is the latest one with the SHA. So you can choose the algorithms based on your specific requirements and based on the versions. One thing you need to check guys that normally in any of the firewalls version is really important because based on the version, you can check out that which kind of algorithms are supported and not supported. Since currently this FTD is on 6.7, you can, we can go and have a look into the 6.7 guide where we will get an understanding whether which all algorithms are being supported in this version of uh, FTD. And accordingly, we can go and experiment because sometimes because of these algorithms not being supported, you may not find your Hagel parameters getting negotiated properly. So this plays a very important role, the kind of crypto parameters which we are going to choose. If you see the authentication type here, it is pre-shared mechanism with automatic key. Now, currently you may go and try to check here. You have options whether you want to go with pre-shared manual with certificate or automatic. Now, automatic is one thing where FMC will dynamically create some key and it will assign it to the site FTDs. Okay. Rather than I can also go with manual where I need to enter the key with whatever key uh, I want. The length has to be of 24 uh, characters. You can see that the pre-shared key length, which is being fixed here, is generally 24 or you can modify that also if you want. Here you can see an option below that. So let me choose this automatic only. I'm not going with manual because key has to be the same. And what this key, when you say automatic, your FMC itself will try to dynamically create it and assign it to both of the site. So let's go there. Wait a minute.
Okay, I'm just saving the configuration so that there is no issues. We can go and edit it and then show you. Because sometimes because of some slowness issue in my network end. So let me just edit this. So here you can see the Ike version, which I was trying to show you. Since it is automatic, the length you can change if you want. 1 to 127 is the maximum. I want to give six characters, eight characters, but I've chosen automatic. So here, your uh, FMC is going to assign it dynamically. Even the IPsec parameter you can choose, which is your next phase two parameters. You can decide what you want to go with, which mode, whether you want to go with tunnel mode or whether you want to go with transport mode. You can uh, have a look here. Tr tunnel and transport mode you can choose from here. And uh, okay, then the transform set again, you can verify the, you can change these IPsec proposal parameters. You can select PFS if you want to enable PFS, perfect forward secrecy. And you can also change the lifetime of your tunnel two or phase two, because normally there is a phase one time, uh, time and the phase two time. So you can go and modify your phase one and phase, uh, phase two timing over here. And there comes an advanced, settings where you can do a lot of things in terms of the keep alive for dead peer detection, etc. So here you can go and do some more advanced configuration on ISA KMP version as well as on the Ike version for the security associations. So what amount of uh, threshold you want, you can just go and modify this for Ike, IPsec as well as for this. So these are some advanced level. If you're not doing anything, you're going with the default, whatever is being chosen. So for proposal, IPsec proposal, it is choosing DES with SHA-1. And for uh, your normal uh, phase one thing, it is choosing DES with SHA latest. And it is an automatic pre-shared mechanism. Certificate, we can take it in a, when we will start our actual sessions, we will be looking into the, even the digital certificate point of view. So this is one topology which we have created. We have saved it, but the job is yet not done because you need to create one access control rule that this particular VPN thing you are allowing from where to where, from which zone to which zone and which network you are applying that. Without creating a control policy, your job is not done. Luckily in this net network or scenario, we have not created a NAT router or a NATing. If you have any NAT device, then you again need to ensure that you have a NATing policy. So policies is something which you should always take care of because that is what the firewall is all about. That you define the policies correctly and place it in a correct position. So though in the start, we created one policy, but that the policy, we didn't create any rule. So when you create a policy, definitely you have got to create the rules that will take place that will be taken up to see before execution of the traffic. So here we will go and add one rule. So after you created the site to site thing, give a name to the rule. So here we will create the v test VPN A to B. So currently this is for A to B. One common policy is there for VPN and here you can create several rules there. You can insert this into a mandatory or you can go and go with the default one. Here you will get an option. We will understand what is this mandatory and default later. There are a lot of things to be understood inside this tab. So first thing is the option of zone. Now, currently when we are creating VPN, you should always ensure that the traffic needs to be enabled from both the ends, like inside to outside, as well as from outside to inside, because anybody can initiate the traffic on this side. Site A can initiate the traffic, as well as site B can initiate the traffic. So in this case, when you're putting the zones, you make sure that you put inside and outside zones in both the source as well as the destination. Okay, because you can't just have one side thing. You have to add the zones inside to outside on both the destination as well as the source because the traffic can be initiated by anybody. Site A can initiate, site B can initiate. So put the zones here properly. Same thing goes with the network that you have two networks, site A network and site B network, which is your inside network. So you can have site A as your source. You can have site A also as your destination. 
when anybody is initiating it. Same thing, site B can your can be your destination. It can also be your source. So ensure that you put this thing properly, the zones and the network information. Then you may have a lot of other things like users, applications, you can do a lot of things and enable logging. When you want to check out for the logs, go and enable the logging at the end. What is the difference at the start and the end? I will cover up and we will start with the proper discussion because you need to understand this. Why we always prefer log at the end of the connection. For the memory resources, we want to use their memory resources correctly. So one rule is being created for A to B. Same thing, you can create the other rules for what you can say B, uh, A to C as well. As of now, let's focus only on this thing. So your policy is created, your topology is created. Simply go and deploy now. Okay, so I'll select all. And we can go and deploy. So meanwhile, this is getting deployed. Let me show you the PCs which have got the IPs dynamically. So show IP. This is VPC 31 on the site A side. You can see that this has got IP from the server 192.168.20.1. This is your DHCP server IP. So 20.10 is the IP of my PC and 20.1 is the inside IP of the FTD. Same way, I can go and check here. So it will be show IP. It might have got dynamically. 40.10, it has not got yet. Okay. IP DHCP. So one IP it should get 40.10. Okay. So you can see one IP we have got. So two, two PCs, 31 and 34 was my PC. 31 was my engineering PC and 34 was my sales PC. So both of these PCs have got the IPs dynamically. So now once this policy is and everything is getting deployed, we need to check the status of the tunnel. So one of them has got failed. That is dot 59. Maybe due to some reason. Let me check. This is 91 dot 60. This is 91 dot 59. Okay, there's something wrong that has happened. My mistake, it might have got off. Mm. So, let it boot. Maybe because I was hovering on it, it might have got off. Okay, so meanwhile, this is getting created. This will get on. That is why the thing has got failed. On the other side, 60 and 61, you can see that uh, the completion has happened. On this, it is failed. You can always go and check the transcript why it got failed. Okay, this will always help us to understand. And this was the policies which we had deployed. This was the preview of what all things we have configured. This is like, you can always go and check why it has got failed. You can get into the deployment history. And there we will be able to see the task which got failed. So here we were, the task which has got failed is 59. So you can check out in the transcript details why it got failed. So it is trying to say that the policy is this, the transaction is this. Uh, out of date some policy group okay fine so once this particular thing is up mostly you will not find the problem so this has to get it's just it will take another two three minutes for uh, the device to come up okay meanwhile what i can do is i can just show you i can get into our uh, side to side thing And we can get into the side-to-side -side VPN here. We can drop down this and we can always, there is an option to check the status of the tunnels. So when you will go and check the status of the tunnel, it will give you some error that unable to establish the connection to the device because my other device, which were the site A and site B, because 
connectivity is there but now the site itself is down okay you will simply say okay dismiss this 60 is up okay so now this is up Okay, so we are having this network up now. So now if I go and deploy this, this is 1.59, good. Show ISA KMP SA. So currently there are no Ike version 1 and version 2 SA because the deployment failed. So what I can go and do, I can simply go and deploy again for 59. Okay, because this was failed. Now you can go and deploy this. Now, once the deployment is done, then we should be able to see, okay, why it got failed again. Okay, it is showing in progress here. Okay, the, it is having, it is showing the deployment is happening. There was some mistake, I guess. You can get into the task and we can check. So policy deployment is ha happening here. We can see this. It is in progress. Once that is done, So it is completed now. So there was some error for field, but it is completed now. So now what I can go and do is I can go and check that there was initially no version one and version two essay. Okay. Once I initiate the traffic, then only you will find the essays coming up. So coming to this, we can go and check the status of the tunnel now. At least it should be able to retrieve that information so here you can go and check the status yes so at least this information you should be able to check first currently Dave, you may not find any essay so on the left hand side you can see for the site a 91.1.59 and on the other side you can see it for the other side, which is 91.1.60. So show crypto IPsec peer and uh, show VPN session DB. So here you will be able to see those traffic. Once we will initiate the traffic, I should be able to check this. Essays are coming up. So let's get into this VPC and try to ping the other side, which is 40.10. So let's get into this ping 192.168.40.10. Let's see. So we can see that we are able to get the output. Now, if I go into this FTD and check out the essays. So yes, you can see that the status of the tunnel is up. We can see the peer and the initiator understanding what is the initiator and what is a peer. So 181.1.1 .1 was the initiator. The role is initiator. That is device was the initiator and the remote device is 182.1.1. .1 .1. The encryption algorithm is DES, hashing is SHA, DH group is 50, 14, authentication is pre-shared and uh, lifetime of this is 86,400 seconds. The local network is 20.0, the remote network is 40.0. So here we can see the version 2 essay and even when you will get into the status of the tunnel now, we should be able to see how many packets got encrypted, encapsulated, all this information you will see. So when you will come here, IPsec essay, you may find this, 
that what is the number of end caps and de caps because the primarily when we say that the traffic is not going through the tunnel people come and say my tunnels are up but i don't see the traffic passing through that so you yeah this is the best mechanism to check whether end caps and encryption is properly or not whatever number of end caps you will see you will see that many number of de caps on the other side so this is on site a so you can see the details are up you can also verify the same thing in your ftd so the thing is show crypto ip sec or isa kmp you can use sa the security association so this was your isa kmp sa the one which we saw you can then see even the ip sec sa the same details what you will what you were able to see in your uh, gui you can verify it or even your on your f uh, cli so the best way is to go and have a look here again if i initiate some more packets this number of packets would increase so on both the ends now i have initiated traffic from site a to site b even if i go on the site b which is bpc 34 and now i try to initiate it on the other side 192.168.20.10 i should be able to see more encapsulation and decapsulation packets on this so you just need to refresh it once you can close this and again try to get the status so again your end caps de caps you will find that the packets are getting increased so which means your traffic is being passed and then you can also go and check in your ftd uh, fmc cli uh, sorry gui the connection events whether those because we have we have said we will log we will try to log into okay we will try to log into and get the details so you would be able to find all these details and the other mechanism is to go and start the packet capture so if you go and start the packet capture at this point on my 01 that was my outside interface okay there is some error in the packet capture so you can always go and start even the packet capture and you can see all those i version 2 messages the four messages and then the data encapsulation happening via esp which we have chosen so the we have created it for site a to site b same way we can also create it from site a to site c i have not done it this way but you can go and similarly create another uh, topology by getting into the fmc going to the site to site uh, one you can create another topology now this was between a to b another topology you would create it using uh, with the a to c so you just need to go and add a new node again add the inside network which you want to protect and select those things so this was point to point with policy based site to site vpn in case you have guys any doubt you can ask me hello yes yes any any doubts you people have in this site to site policy based vpn yeah so i leave the forum now to for the question and answer so in case you have any queries related to this topic or any other thing you can go ahead hello if in case you don't have any doubts then uh, i would ask a request uh, sajit to take over uh, for the queries related to the schedule of the class and etc from the candidates sajit are you there yes okay all right thank you guys uh, we'll see you once when we will start full fledge Hello everyone
Can you guys hear me? Can you see my screen? Uh, yes. yes yeah so myself sajid so actually i'm here to give you all the details regarding to the this ccnp uh, security combo course so accordingly about all the topics and uh, course and all will be covered here so i i will be giving you all the details okay so here uh, basically uh, like here you can see uh, like course syllabus and class schedules and all the details will be there so here we are going to take this uh, ccnp security combo course so in this uh, course uh, we are going to cover totally uh, like three uh, course or modules you can say so first will be the s core module so in that from basic to expert level we are going to teach then uh, next will be the cisco asa ftd so here also total end-to-end uh, -end firewall uh, training will be given like on the ASA and the firepowers. So all the things should be covered here as well. So at the end there will be the third module. So it will be on uh, Cisco ICE part. So basically in this uh, combo course we are going to cover all these three modules. Okay. So the like uh, for uh, class schedules the timings and this will be like this will be going to be a weekend batch saturday sunday from uh, like 7 30 pm ist to 9 30 pm ist okay on uh, weekends only two days class this will be there and uh, this will be going to be like for four to five months course duration totally in months so all over it will cover uh, all three modules in four to five months it will take to cover so next uh, we'll show you the slide for course enrollment access and details what all the details and accesses we are going to provide you guys so here access we are providing is like uh, we'll be providing you the recording access for lifetime so means uh, you can see uh, which classes you will be attending on zoom meeting so that recordings you are getting on the portal so that uh, in future if you want to go through the videos if you want to practice something like uh, you can go through there okay and uh, sorry one second So this will be remaining with you for lifetime access. So in case whenever you are going to practice, you can go through it and uh, it remains for lifetime. Secondly, we'll be providing you the 24 into 7 lab access, which are uh, present on our servers and cloud servers. Okay. So for this uh, total CCNP security combo uh, for each module, you'll be getting three months of lab access. Okay. Like you can say for uh, score you are getting three months of uh, remote lab access that you can access it totally remotely 24 into 7 unlimited okay and like same as it is you'll be getting it for uh, cisco asa ftd class so for that course also you'll be getting three months of unlimited lab access of uh, three months duration and uh, for uh, your cisco ice course there also you'll be getting three months of lab access 24 into 7 unlimited okay and uh, then next will be the like we'll be providing you the materials like uh, workbooks ppts pdfs like uh, step by step lab manuals all the materials we will provide you okay that you can download and you can keep it with you as well so end to end uh, material will be given and uh, like if you have the good configuration of your system then uh, we will help you out to set up a home lab so that once you are excuse done with me. Your, yeah so. uh, excuse me regarding the system configuration what is uh, the minimum requirement uh, to like initiate such uh, this lab uh, for uh, fmc ftd sa see uh, for uh, this cisco asa ftd i mean, uh, I mean how, how many core how many cores yeah. how many memories so for uh, Cisco ASA FTD firewall, the minimum requirement is uh, 16 GB RAM and around uh, 4 to 6 core is sufficient for Cisco ASA FTD firewall. 
and for uh, score uh, like uh, you can see that also will be sufficient in 16 gb ram so minimum around uh, 16 gb ram to 32 gb ram that's okay and for core point of view you need to have some 6 to 10 core for score lab that should be run uh, well and uh, for this cisco ice part so that should be uh, like need a big resource around you can say 64 gb ram or uh, some 84 gb ram like it needs a more resource around you can count as 24 core so that will be uh, taking a heavy resource for the cisco eyes better for cisco eyes you guys can run on the our uh, remote lab itself so in case uh, like you will be having three months of lab access right so accordingly you can uh, work on it so in case if you guys have any uh, heavy resources then uh, you just need to reach out to our backend team on our support deal you need to raise a ticket so our team member will connect with you and uh, we will do the your setup on your personal laptop or your personal servers it may be okay is it got clear yes yes any any minimum core uh, 24 uh four for for cores number of cores 24 see, uh see for uh, cisco acftd and uh, score purpose the core is uh, sufficient as you can say uh, 4 to 8 core okay as uh, uh, this ram perspective 16 gb ram to 32 gb ram is sufficient for both this okay and uh, as ice perspective cisco ice perspective we need the heavy resource yeah how much you know core uh 24 core cores are around uh, uh, onwards from the 16 core to 24 core and okay. uh, what about uh, the ram ram minimum you need to have uh, 64 gb ram onwards itself 64 gb 128 gb so that will take heavy resources because uh, we need to run uh, uh, multiple machines and all these things will be there okay so like we'll be assisting you to set up a lab on your personal laptop then um, uh, that will also remains with you for lifetime so which we have done the setup on your personal laptop so whenever you want you can access it that will remains with you for lifetime that similar labs which you guys are using on your remote server that labs as well we will be providing in the home lab setup okay and uh, we'll be providing you the 24 into 7 backend support from our network unit team like if you are facing any issues any queries regarding to the course or regarding to the labs or uh, regarding to the web portal or regarding to it may be on your topic certain topics if you didn't got it exactly so in that case you just uh, need to raise a ticket on our support deal one of our team member will connect with you and we will resolve your issues accordingly in meantime okay so it may be any concern you can uh, reach us out on our support deal it's on uh, support at the rate network journey.com and here uh, like for admission and pricing perspective as of now we are giving a 25 percent early bird discount offer so to avail this offer you just uh, need to contact us on our below details as we have uh, shared our backend team number like uh, for admission purpose you need to reach us out on this number so simultaneously i am sharing on the zoom meeting chat as well so if you guys are planning to enroll so you can uh, contact us on our numbers so like see guys uh, this will be remaining for uh, next 16 to 24 hours so the discount pricing will be going on so you guys can reach us out and uh, you can avail this 25 percent discount offer and you can book your seats for this upcoming course Hello. Yeah. Uh, anyone, guys, uh, do you have any doubts related to any concern? You guys can come up. I'm there to answer you. It may be related to anything regarding this course.
or class hello guys i have uh, shared you the details on the zoom chat so accordingly whoever are interested they can uh, ping us on whatsapp so to avail this uh, 25% discount offer so you guys can book your slot on this uh, pricing after 24 hours the pricing will uh, resume for uh, regular pricing itself anything any doubts guys no thank you sorry yeah guys thank you thank you for listening me and uh, if you guys have uh, like further any doubts or anything it may be you guys can reach us out on our whatsapp number okay. okay okay thank you thank you guys see you in upcoming classes